Hey guys, it's Lucy Kate and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in today's in today's video, we have a sort of chit chat video and the video topic is how I mastered the Japanese language in just one year. Just as a disclaimer, this video is not to discourage anyone in any way. We all learn languages at different paces. This is just me sharing my experience and hopefully giving you guys some advice. So before we get into the video, if you're not already, definitely hit the subscribe button for weekly videos. I post a wide variety of videos such as vlogs, Japan related content, beauty content. So without further ado, let's get into the video. I did actually film this video about two years back, I think, but I did private all my old, most of my old videos since then. So this is a refilm. And basically, I'm first of all going to give you a little introduction, um, some background information about me and my Japanese language journey. So technically, I wouldn't say that I'm somebody who has learned from scratch zero as I do have Japanese family and so it's not like I really really learned from zero um, from what I know when I was about three or four years old um, I was studying Japanese and um, apparently I could speak a little bit back then when I was a baby but I stopped studying for two reasons one because I started regular school and so I was very busy and it was difficult to keep up with everything and two I lived in a rural place where there was no one who was Japanese in my town so no one who I could speak Japanese with and so therefore I grew up with just English and then learning you know French and German on the side and it was never really in my life plan to move to Japan to live there permanently but you know life is funny in that way things change and I ended up moving to Japan at the age of 12 and this was also partially my decision as well I always loved Japan I'd been there on vacation and so when I first came to Japan when I first went to Japan I could not form a whole conversation in Japanese I could only say you know a few words like arigato like thank you konnichiwa hello or itadakimasu those kind of things to me in a way I think it's practically like from zero beginner level Level that I studied as I couldn't even write kanji or like the Japanese alphabet as well of course Japanese alphabet is hiragana and katakana I couldn't write all of it so to me I'd say I pretty much started again from zero so what we're gonna do is I have four serious tips on how I master Japanese in one year and then the remaining four more fun stuff that you can do at home or from a foreign country as well. To begin with, my number one advice on how to master Japanese is the traditional way of using a textbook to study. So a textbook that I used when I was studying Japanese was this textbook right here. So I don't have the physical copy with me right now anymore, but this was the very much like the mainstream textbook to use back then. I'm not sure if it still is, but Minna no Nihongo was a very well-known book. All the foreigners who moved to Japan use this book to study. It's a really well formatted textbook, I would say. The way it's structured, it really helps you to study study Japanese from all four aspects, speaking, listening, reading, and writing. And if you can't read the Japanese alphabet, if you can't read hiragana or katakana, they have translated versions of the textbooks as well in many languages. So I really recommend this book. Unless they publish a new version, by now it is a pretty old textbook, but textbooks, you know, you can't beat textbooks for like, the you know, textbooks is the most traditional way of studying and it works. So yeah, I went through these Mina Nihongo books really Really quickly I managed to go through all the levels like from beginner to advanced I wouldn't say I'm the most studious person it depends on motivation for me so if I don't have a certain goal I just won't do something but when it came to me you know wanting to study Japanese I really wanted to achieve this goal because I didn't want to be the only one who couldn't understand what everyone was saying and so um, I was really determined to master the language especially moving there at such a young age and wanting to make friends as a child it was a really serious goal that i had and that's why i studied that with that textbook every day and you know it's the traditional way of studying but i really think that it's effective and it's a really really helpful book yeah i wish i had the copy with me now to like show you but it's a it's a book that i really recommend so if i could find a link to the books or something i'll try and link it down below the second way i studied japanese was writing when i was studying japanese that was 
was still when we were kind of transitioning from flip phones to iPhones. So we would still handwrite a lot, you know, in class. Um, I'm not sure what it's like in schools nowadays, but I do know that many students carry tablets and use computers for school. But to me personally, I think nothing beats handwriting. That's why nowadays I forget kanji if I'm not writing it because I'm just, you know, selecting a kanji of a keyboard. Like it's really different choosing kanji when typing on a keyboard and actually writing it by your hand and I really feel that writing triggers a part of your brain and helps you remember the kanji and especially for Japanese you know I think Japanese is a very unique language because you don't just have one alphabet like English like A to Z you have hiragana, katakana, kanji and even romaji which is technically English alphabet so if you don't write the kanji down it's gonna be difficult to physically remember everything that's why back when I was studying Japanese, I would do as much writing as possible. I mean, this is because I also love writing myself, but um, for example, the Mina no Nihongo textbook, I would write down the sentences, like the questions and the answers fully in a notebook, just so I could practice writing Japanese words and characters so I could remember them. So for example, if you have like a workbook and you do multiple choice answers, it's good to choose, you know, do multiple choice quizzes to boost your language level. but choosing A, B or C, D isn't going to help you remember the vocabulary. That's why even if I had like a multiple choice quiz, I would write all the answers, all the questions down just to jog, just to put it in my memory as much as possible. This advice I think is especially important for our current generation where we rely on like computers and technology so much, but nothing beats handwriting. And then the third advice that I have is speaking. So as of writing, improves your memory for kanji, for being able to read and write kanji. Um, speaking is needed for us to be able to express ourselves in that language. Even though I do believe in the traditional textbook method, the writing method, that's good for inputting stuff, you know, inputting more vocabulary into your knowledge. But in order to be able to output, in order to be able to express the words that you've known, you need speaking. I spoke to many people. I tried to make lots of friends, even though I'm such an introvert. To be honest, if I was thrown into that situation now, I probably wouldn't have been able to be as confident and try to speak in Japanese. I would have been more embarrassed and shy. But I do think that a positive thing of moving at such a young age, at 12 years old, is you still have that child curiosity inside of you I guess you don't feel as shy and so I spoke to many people some people were very patient with me and really helped me learn Japanese other people were not so nice and that can be another story for another day but speak as much as possible and even if you're not living in Japan um, there are many ways that you can practice speaking Japanese nowadays um, there's so many apps or like websites language teaching websites or apps or there's even apps where I'm pretty sure you can exchange knowledge. So for example, you teach a Japanese person English or your native language and they talk to you or teach you Japanese. And you know, even social media, um, as long as you use it in a safe way, um, social media is a great way to meet people, um, to speak Japanese with them. Maybe you can find some local communities where you live. So yeah, I think that's one way that we can really utilize technology is with connecting with more people. And even if you don't like talking to people and you're an introvert, one thing that I did was I spoke alone. Okay, I know that sounds like I'm a crazy person but what I did was I spoke alone in my room when I was a child so I would read out textbooks or read out manga or like books out loud you know just as long as you're speaking it out loud that counts and um, that counts as practicing Japanese so and th yeah that's a good advice if you're an introvert the last sort of serious advice I have for you guys before we move on to some more fun stuff is environment so this is a way to learn Japanese that not everyone will have the opportunity to. You know, not everyone can just pack up everything and move to Japan, of course. But for me, I think one major factor in how I learned Japanese so quickly was being thrown into the environment. I would say that compared to other developed countries, especially European countries, I think can speak English. And it's the same for, for example, South Korea or even China. A majority of people, I'd say, can speak you know, daily conversation level English. And Japan, I would say, even now, is still very behind in, when it comes to English education. I saw it firsthand with running English school businesses, but they're still very behind in the English education. So you can imagine it 
was even worse um, like 10 to 15 years ago when I moved to Japan. Not many people in like my local area were able to speak English. I'm sure it's very different for example in like Tokyo or Osaka but that wasn't the case for me where I was living and so being thrown into an environment where not many people can speak English it kind of pressures you in just you have to study, you have to learn Japanese because otherwise there's no one there, you know, to translate things for you. Especially because I didn't have an iPhone back then, another important thing. You know, nowadays you can pull out Google Translate and translate on the spot even though it's not accurate all the time. So yeah, I did have my mom, you know, she speaks English and Japanese and so she would translate on the spot for me but she, she wasn't going to be there for me all the time. Of course, I had school and although I went to an international school in Japan, um, not everyone came from an English-speaking country. We had people that um, were from different countries. We had Japanese students who had lived in different countries and so not everyone lived in America or England. So therefore I had to, you know, learn Japanese as fast as possible so I could communicate with everyone so I could understand the classes because the majority of the classes were conducted in Japanese for my school. Of course I had the school factor where I had to study as fast as possible. The second factor was my career so I've talked about this in many videos but I modeled in Japan since the age of 12 to 13 and when I first started modeling I could hardly speak any Japanese and so I guess modeling in a way helped me learn Japanese faster because I was thrown into the environment where everyone around me was speaking Japanese. Um, for example, in a photo shoot, like the photographers, the hair and makeup, not everyone can speak English, um, even in photo shoots in Tokyo. So, you know, in order to communicate, to actually complete the photo shoot, I needed to be able to speak Japanese. And not just that, but say for example, hair and makeup. If you've done photo shoots before, you'll know what it's like, but some hair and makeup sessions can last hours depending on the photo shoot and it's not like we can just have like an awkward silence during the whole time so of course I wanted to speak Japanese so I could communicate and make conversation and another thing was um, this is also due to the fact that we were before the iPhone era I only had a flip phone back when I started modeling and so I would but I can't believe I did this now like thinking back I'm really proud of myself and also impressed that I wasn't as scared as I would feel now. I traveled all around Japan to do photo shoots. I traveled to Osaka, Tokyo, major cities, rural places sometimes alone at like the age of 13 or 14, not being able to speak Japanese completely, not being able to read all the kanji and like I'd have a map with me. I wrote the train times in a notepad because of course I didn't have an app to look up the train times. So it was really scary, but I guess because I was thrown into that environment where I had to, you know, pull through, otherwise I'd literally get lost. Um, I feel that those kind of pressure points they're both good and bad, um, it did help me to learn Japanese quicker. But yeah, thinking back now, I can't believe that I got onto like the Shinkansen, like the bullet train, just traveled alone by myself for hours. Um, I do think that it's due to the fact that I was in Japan, I was able to do this. I mean, if this was, for example, the US, definitely would not be safe to do that. So yeah, I really think that um, environment is a major factor on how I managed to learn Japanese so quickly. Those are kind of like my serious tips, I guess, like the main studying related pieces of advice or reasons that I learned Japanese so quickly. And the next four tips I have are more to do with hobbies or like fun ways that I study Japanese. Because one thing that I really strongly believe in is when you're studying something, not just a language. The major key is to enjoy it. If you're not enjoying something, you're bound to quit. Well, depending on your personality, you might have more of a tolerance, but especially for me, I'm the type of person to just completely throw things off if I'm not enjoying it. I need to be enjoying the process. That's why even this YouTube journey, like because I'm enjoying making these videos, I've continued for so long and finally starting to see growth. So next, I just wanna talk about four ways, fun ways that I studied Japanese. So the first fun way that I studied Japanese was playing the DS. So this is really where you can tell my the generation that I'm from. I guess nowadays it would be more of, you know, Nintendo Switch or 
iPhone like app games but for me um, I loved playing on the DS I went through all the DS stages up until the 3DS and the two main games that I used was Dogs and Animal Crossing. Dogs and Animal Crossing I had both prior played in English so I really feel that not just games but when it comes to books and TV shows as well if you've already read or watched that media in your native language it's easier to understand and study when you study it in a second language a foreign language and so those are both games I played in English before. Animal Crossing was really fun I think to play because it's kind of like you're talking with the animal residents so it's kind of like daily conversation in Japanese and they were just really fun cute games to play. I was glued to my DS as a child and it was a really fun way for me to get used to Japanese so yeah that is um, one vivid memory I have me and my DS. And the second um, fun way I studied Japanese in that first year was reading manga and I do want to point out that I do not read the typical mangas. I didn't back then and I don't now. So for example, like, I don't know, One Piece or something, that's a really famous Japanese manga. I'm not really into action manga or anime. So I guess the number one anime now is like Demon Slayer. And then there's Shingeki no Kyojin. I don't know the English name, like giant something. I'm not really into those to be honest. I've tried getting into them. I'm not into that part of the anime slash manga culture. I'm very much into the kawaii culture of Japan, like shoujo manga, like cutesy things. So yeah, you won't be seeing any of like the mainstream recommendations from me. I vividly remember reading Doraemon. Um, I think I, I had this like Doraemon manga that was in English and I'm pretty sure that the book was meant to be for Japanese people who were studying English but instead I used it to study Japanese because it was like it was in English and Japanese I think so yeah Doraemon is a really heartwarming manga to read heartwarming anime to watch as well which I will talk about in a second so one manga I vividly remember really enjoying as a child the and I'll put up the title here it was basically a compilation of short manga stories about dogs so I was very much a dog lover since I was a child I had a really adorable lovable Labrador retriever when I was younger and of course now I'm a Frenchie mom but basically it was all heartwarming stories about the connection of a dog and their owner and it included these sort of 10 commandments of owning a dog and it just really made me emotional reading it even now when I look back on it it makes me so emotional it's a really heartwarming story this manga I really enjoyed reading and I didn't really read much books because books are definitely more difficult to read especially in Japanese but one book I enjoyed reading was I was Hachi um, of course, there's the Hachi statue in Shibuya, which I went to see and I took a picture of. But those sort of heartwarming stories I really enjoyed. So I really recommend reading books or manga or watching TV about things you're interested in or things that you have prior knowledge of. That leads us to the next um, way that I studied Japanese and that is anime. I think anime is one of the most popular ways to learn Japanese or even so the probably one of the number one reasons why people become interested in Japan and its culture is from anime and again as I mentioned during the manga section I don't really watch the mainstream anime that is popular I'm more into like cutesy character stuff for example anime that I watched as a child was Anpama Anpama is such a classic I think even now I'd enjoy watching it um, I loved watching Tamagotchi um, Doraemon I just mentioned to you guys there's also another really good heartwarming sort of family anime series which is called Chibi Marigo. I even went to the Chibi Marigo theme park which they have in Japan and I also love Disney stuff and Sailor Moon as well. Sailor Moon is definitely a classic. Yeah, I think anime is a very fun way to study Japanese but one thing I'd like to point out is you're not going to be able to learn full-on daily conversation just from anime. Personally, I think that, you know, the conversations they have in anime, depending on the show you're watching, they're not the sort of conversations you have in everyday life. Like the way they speak is very different to basic, you know, regular Japanese conversations. I think that that is one thing to know if you're studying using anime. Maybe don't just rely on anime, but use other uh, medias as well to study. 
the last fun way that I studied Japanese in my first year was TV. To be honest, I don't really watch many Japanese drama shows simply because I'm very into the long form content that we have in Western dramas where we have like many, many seasons and they're long lasting series. In Japan, there does tend to be a pattern of TV dramas only lasting for one season and they're like eight to ten episodes and then they're finished whereas I really like to be committed to like one show and binge watch it but however one show that I was obsessed with in the first year I came to Japan was Hana Yori Dango so in English this is called Boys Over Flowers this was a very popular anime slash it's originally a manga series back then um, they even have Taiwanese versions and Korean versions but the Japanese version is the best I highly recommend you watch it if you're into love stories, if you're into Western dramas like Gossip Girl. Um, oh my gosh, I was so obsessed with that show. I just did a rewatch last year and I was still so obsessed with it. Um, I really wish they had more stuff like this. I mean, if you guys know anything, definitely let me know. Yeah, when I first watched Hanayori Dango, I couldn't understand it at all. So I watched it with English subtitles. And then gradually, as I rewatched it again and again, I was able to move on to Japanese subtitles and I was fully able to understand it and for a new tv show recommendation one tv show from netflix that i really loved even though it's not my usual genre of shows was alice in borderland i believe this was a hit netflix show um i think they have two seasons right um that show was really good i think i watched it either the year before last year but it was it's kind of like a thriller series like it's like you can't look away from the screen for one second because there's constantly something happening that was a really good one and um, if you're into horror I recommend watching Japanese horror movies because they do really good ghost movies yeah, Japanese ghost movies are really scary definitely a different kind of theme to American movies but both are good in their own ways uh, not just TV dramas but I highly recommend variety shows so this is a genre in Japan that they have on TV. In English I guess you call it like a talk show but this is like the main content that you'd see on Japanese TV during the night. So um, these variety shows, these talk shows, they're very comedic, they include lots of comedy and uh, one interesting point is Japanese TV always has colorful subtitles on the screen. I think this is to be inclusive for all generations so people that can't hear can watch as well. But these colorful subtitles really help if you're studying Japanese because then you can read along what they're saying so one show I like is Getsuyo Gara Yofukashi this is a really funny show that I enjoy watching lots of Japanese comedy and humor in there but yeah variety shows are a category I recommend if you want to know more about what kind of shows like those kind of talk shows I recommend I, I definitely love to do like separate videos in the future talking more in depth about them that was just a kind of like brief explanation on how I mastered Japanese in one year. I'm really proud of the fact that I'm bilingual. I do admit that when I was younger, um, before I moved to Japan, I didn't really want to speak Japanese. I, I guess I, I just wanted to fit in and I didn't really show that part of culture that I had in me. But now as a 25 year old i'm really proud of the fact that i'm bilingual that you know i lived in japan i lived in japan for just over 10 years and it was such an amazing experience you know i spent my teenage years there and it will always hold a special place in my heart i would say that i'm fully bilingual but if i was if i were to have to choose a language it would be english um, english is still very much my stronger language um, it's just easier to express things in english but i don't really have you know severe struggles in Japanese exam wise I got the top grade in the Japanese language proficiency test basically the level I got was N1 I passed that when I was in college if you want me to do more informative videos on like actually passing the exams studying tips I'd be happy to do those kind of videos as well and when it comes to pronunciation uh, one interesting thing on my Japanese language journey is I guess because I I spoke Japanese as a baby or it could be to the fact that I moved when I was 12 because you know up to 12 is like the key prime age where you can learn languages and it 
gets harder the older you get, but nothing's impossible. Um, one interesting thing is my pronunciation. So when I was first studying Japanese when I was 12, um, I look back on my pronunciation and I sound like a complete gaijin. So yeah, one good thing about me doing TV work from such a young age is I have that footage I can look back on. It's so cringy now because I sound like a complete foreigner. Whereas now, if I listen to my Japanese YouTube videos or other videos, um, I sound like a native Japanese speaker. That's why I sometimes get surprise remarks like from um, going to photo shoots. They'd be like, wow, you sound like you're a native speaker. So I'm really proud of, you know, my pronunciation has really improved and people would mistake me for a native speaker now. But at the same time, I do think that pronunciation isn't everything. It's not 100% possible for everyone to develop to that level where they sound like a complete native speaker. So it doesn't really matter, you know, as long as you are able to express yourself, pronunciation at the end, they doesn't matter. But for me, I just thought this was a really interesting part of my Japanese learning journey. Thanks to speaking Japanese, it's led to me being able to do so much work. It's given me so many opportunities. For example, you know, modeling and TV work, um, running English schools, running businesses. So I really wish all of you guys luck who are studying Japanese as well. It's not the easiest language to learn. I mean, of course, no languages are easy, but when it comes to Japanese, you have kanji as well. Even though I live in the US now, I live in Hawaii and Hawaii has a very big Japanese population um, so therefore I'm very lucky in the fact that I still get to use Japanese and English in my everyday life because there's many Japanese people around me and um, even my significant other he is the same as me and that he is fluent in both languages so we kind of mix both languages sometimes when we communicate so that's why when we were in Japan we would get some shocked faces like from Japanese people they would be like these two look like complete foreigners and they're speaking in Japanese. And then vice versa, you know, um, we'd be in the US and people see us speaking Japanese and they'd be surprised. So yeah, I still use Japanese in my everyday life. Of course, my social media and my Japanese YouTube channel has a bigger audience. So I use Japanese on there too. I do want to provide more, how do you say? like educational content to you guys on this channel not just japan related content but like real like study tips and those things if you have any sort of like video requests in specific um related to living in japan or studying japanese i'd be more than happy to share my experience i really want to provide you know valuable content so if you have any video requests um don't hesitate to comment them down on this video or any others um if you want to hear me speaking in japanese um as i said i do have a japanese channel which has a bigger audience i'll link my japanese channel down below and you can hear me actually speaking japanese the majority of videos i do post english and japanese versions of so you can kind of compare them and use them for studying and so yeah that is the end of today's video um i hope this was informative to those of you who are studying Japanese. If you haven't already, definitely hit the subscribe button for weekly content. Comment down below on your experiences or tips in learning Japanese and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys!